This week's episode of Our Fair City has been brought to you by HeartLife, all the life you'll ever need, and by CreativeKali.com, selling geek chic fashion accessories such as custom comic book shoes, Lego earrings, and original works. Spelled with two K's, that's CreativeKali.com, K-R-E-A-T-I-V-E-K-A-L-I.com, CreativeKali.com. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by the company you depend upon for all of your greatest needs, Heart Life. These stories are true dramatizations from our fair city's glorious history. So listen and remember, Heart Life, all the life you'll ever need. Welcome back, eager listener, to Our Fair City. Tonight, we take you once more to a place where the wind doesn't howl. It screams. On a friendless plane like this, you don't try to calculate your chances of survival. You have none. That screaming wind careens maliciously across the vast tundra and breaks, finally, against the side of a monolithic structure. This is the Heart Life Headquarters, thrusting out from the trackless snow and stretching impossibly high towards the iron-gray underbellies of the dark clouds overhead. The wind screams in wordless rage as it pelts against the building's enduring black walls, but to Herbert West, standing undaunted some distance from the tower, it whispers, Hope. Hope for a fresh start. Hope for new experiences and new meetings. Hope for our fair city. With his overland transport out of fuel, he has no choice but to stand wrapped in a surface survival suit of his own making, patent pending, and wait. But not for long. Herbert West can see a vehicle cresting a hill not far away, heading in his direction. Unlike Herbert West's own single-person craft, it is a large, ungainly construction, moving with a deliberate slowness across the ice. As it approaches, Herbert, in a timeless overture of friendship, sticks his thumb into the air and attempts to look non-threatening. Stuffed me full of earthworms and caught me a mole man, someone on the surface. How did you make it outside? Allow me to introduce myself. I am Herbert West. I did not make it outside from your fair city. However, I am here in hopes of entering it. I'm not from around here, you see. Well, you can talk. That's one down. Next, what color is this? Well, with the snow blowing, it's difficult to say exactly. But I'd place it somewhere between plum and burgundy. What? It's violet, my good man. Purple, purple. I call this mauve, actually, but that'll do. Now, <clears throat> you must be hungry. I've got some pan-fried brain here. Or some brain soup to warm you up. Oh, dear. <clears throat> I certainly don't wish to refuse your hospitality, but please understand that I'm not in the habit of consuming the brains of my fellow homo sapiens. Health risks, you see. Well, now that cinches this. One of the Woken would have surely fallen for that. Are you quite sane? Yeah, I don't really have any brain soup. Just have to be careful who you pick up out here. Climb in. My name is Simon. <sighs> Thank you, Simon. Two guys. Now, you may not be one of the Woken, but you are a liar, and I know it. You said you're not from around here, and I know that ain't true. Everyone here is from here. Nobody comes, nobody leaves. Oh, I'm sure. Until now, that is. You see, I was a resident of a city some 3,408.59 kilometers, um, that way. But, uh, through various circumstances, it became apparent that it was time for me to move on, you see. Make a few too many enemies, 
<laughs> As a matter of fact, Simon, that is precisely how it came to pass. It was a difficult journey, but it was time to leave that place, and so I did. Coincidentally, if nobody ever arrived from parts unknown, what were you so wary of when you saw me on that hill? Well, you'll think I'm crazy like everyone else, but I thought you might be one of the Woken. Aha. Uh -huh. You'll see. We're coming up on it. There are 876 bodies at rest over that hill. Do the math. That's 876 potential risen corpses. That's a lot of risen corpses, it's true. A lot of the Woken, damn right. 876 here, better than 1,200 less than a mile to the north, and another couple thousand on the other side of the city. Ah, so you see the potential in them. And tell me, <clears throat> have they been completely frozen since their deaths? Since we damned them by chucking them like litter on the snow, eyes wide and staring up at infinity looking into an abyss. What do you suppose that does to them? Well, to be honest, I suppose it does a reasonable job of preserving their tissue. There may be some cellular damage due to ice crystal formation, but as cold as it is, they should be in very good shape overall. Exactly. And one day soon, there will be more of them than there are of us. And one day they will rise, and we'll see a team and writhe and mass of bodies lurching and crawling their way up the hill towards us, towards our city. And if that happened at this very moment, you and me, we'd be the first to die. I believe you. What? Your conclusions are perfectly reasonable. I mean, assuming that birth and death rates here in... What do you call this city? Heartlife. If the death rates in Heartlife are anything like they were in Albuquerque, especially <clears throat> towards the end of my tenure there, your risk assessment is probably very accurate. Have you ever considered a career in... science? No, son, I already have a purpose. When hell is full, and believe me, it is, the dead will rise and walk the earth. I know that for fact. And I will be here to meet them and to bash their heads in. We're almost there. Be ready. The engine roars in anticipation as the pair approach the crest of a ridge. Inside the cramped, heavily insulated cab, two heads rise in unison. Craning for a view of the valley below, they reach the peak and gasp. <gasps> All is as it should be. Uh, not, not today. today. Now this is something. When was this taken? Three days ago. That man, West? I don't believe he's from around here. I heard him say so. That's ridiculous. The psychopath with the mortuary truck is right. Nobody comes, and nobody leaves hot life. Perhaps in your tiny conception of the universe, this is the case. But there's more outside of heart life than our executive board would like to admit. Perhaps even more than they know of. Go to timestamp 3317 and highlight the section with his face. Run it through the database of policies. Mm, nothing. Maybe he's had himself erased. Ugh, move your useless backside. No, he's never even been in the system. You can... You can even find people who've been erased. You must have realized by now that I am very, very good at this. Now shut up and sit back down. I want you to search every street safe monitor for that face, and if that fails, tap into the corporate surveillance network. Use my password. Find this Dr. West and do it now. Dr. West? How do you know he's a doctor? Can't you spot a fellow moron from a hundred meters away? Dr. West is a scientist of some caliber, and I honestly have no idea what he wants. Predicting and preparing for impending disaster is perhaps prudent. We shall have to keep a very close eye on him. Get to work. With the order given, Dr. Caligari's devoted sycophant sets upon his task, scanning through the massive surveillance network of the Heart Life Tower. 
Through the lens of a camera, Caligari and her associate cannot feel the cold, damp air, or smell the sour, metallic aroma of the city's unwashed masses and aging machinery. Life in Hartford is dark, cramped, and monotonous. Little has changed since the Heartlife Corporation assumed its role as the de facto government. At least, until now. There he is! That's him! It is? What is he doing? Give me audio. Yes, of course. Don't let me keep you. Sandy, wait up! You didn't say yes to him, did you? What a nice young mole. Reanimator? Hello? Anyone? Oh, Christmas! A body. This is either the best or the worst thing that has happened in Heartlife in a very, very long time. Follow him. I want to know where he takes that woman's head and what he does with it. <clears throat> Just do it and report back to me. The man is a scientist, and I assure you that whatever he does with it will be in the name of research. Just keep that in your tiny brain and do not lose him. <clears throat> Dear policies of Heartlife, do not panic. The arrival of Herbert West may be an event without precedent, but be assured, Heartlife is very safe. Our fair city is prepared. Soon the municipal usurpation and deterrence efficacy resource will be on the case. These professionals, like Special Investigator George Chamberlain, will tend to the equilibrium and calm of our accustomed way of life. No doubt, Dr. Caligari, corporate scientist of Heartlife, will report this promptly to the authorities, and, equally without question, the outsider will be detained before any real harm can be done. This record set will illustrate how we of the city can depend upon our system to handle problems before they go too far. <laughs>